Hey guys, welcome back to another Dead by Daylight Killer tier list video. I've done a lot of these. It's just shitty fucking tier lists in my time playing Dead by Daylight. And here is the next exciting installment in said tier list series. Uh, it's been a long time since I did my last one. The, the last one I did was when Pyramid Head came out, and that was forever ago. So we have uh, two new killers to rank, and uh, a few other codes that have been changed, been reworked. I don't think I'm going to include the clown rework, because I personally haven't played it. I didn't get on the PTB uh, when it was out. Uh, that patch is probably going to come out super soon, either this week or next week. So that's pretty exciting, but we're not going to include it on the... Tier list. I don't imagine it's super good anyway. Clown is... Clown's clown. <laughs> um, we're gonna get to him in this video. Um, I've done so many of these, and every time I do it, I'm just repeating the same things over and over. But it's been long enough since I did the last one, where now I think I have matured in my opinions on these killers. Uh, I'm gonna try to rank them as less obvious picks. Uh, not what anyone would traditionally rank the killers as. I'm gonna really search my feelings on how good I think they are, uh, and that's that's it. Uh, we're ranking these based on their best, like I usually do. So uh, imagine like the best trapper player or the best pig. Um, we'll be we will be factoring in how how much of a skill gap there is. It won't be a huge factor, but I'm just gonna lead with the feelings and my feelings on each killer and kind of describe what I think is good about them and what I think is bad about them. So that's enough preamble. Also, my favorite thing about doing these videos is doing a disclaimer at the start, saying that, hey, this video is an opinion. As like most tier lists, they are opinion based. My opinion is not law and I, <laughs> listen guys, I t I've repeated this so many times at this point. I am gonna have some oddball picks, I guarantee it. Please, just promise me you won't give a shit. There's really no reason to. I guess we're gonna go chronologically. I don't know why some of these are listed three times and four times in the case of the Oni. Uh, Trapper. And we're gonna rank these pictures. Trapper. Definitely done. No, I'm just kidding. Um, I've historically ranked him super high. Not super high. Uh, most people would put this kind of shit here. Um, which I don't think is very fair. I think I'm gonna keep him where I usually have him, which is B tier, because um, Trapper, a lot of times, um, you'll be surprised how many choices you have with this killer. Um, the People make the meme of like when you're going up against a really good team, he's more of just a man with a machete, uh, which I definitely do empathize with. Um, there's a lot of bullshit attached to this killer that can make him really unfun to play. Um, but he's also one of the more rewarding killers. Um, he rewards good players who take time to set up and predict what survivors are going to do. Um, so if you're a good player and you know where to trap, how to trap, um, most of the time you're gonna, you're gonna yield good benefits from playing this killer, uh, with his power. Because it does benefit, um, killers you know what they're doing so for that reason he does get me to shit because you do have to be a really good killer player to kind of play a good trapper um but i do think he's very rewarding and definitely has a lot of options uh both in his own counterplay and the counterplay of survivors uh, which can feel pretty shitty sometimes um but i yeah i think he's a pretty just average middle of the road good pick dude wraith is god awful this is a killer that you have to play in a markedly different way from other killers if you want to play well. Um, it's basically you have to play hit and run and not taking every chase, which is a pretty shitty feeling uh, if you're a good killer player um, and you pride yourself in being able to shut down loops a lot, which is something that I would pride myself in. Uh, playing this killer in this different play style, uh, sometimes it's good because you don't have to deal with the stress of doing mind games and shit. Most of the time, it feels bad to just kind of leave survivors until you have an opportunity to get the jump on them, or if they make a mistake and you benefit from it. I'm really looking forward to his buff when they're going to give him true invisibility and shit like that. Um, he's one of the more atom dependent killers. He's just... It's, just it's, it's terrible. Billy. I've been playing a lot more Billy recently. Um, I didn't used to be the best Billy player. Uh, because I just played respecting pallets and shit like that, 
and I have my own rough patches with Billy. And uh, nowadays I, I play him a lot more. I'm able to kind of gauge what makes Billy good. Um, and I'd say he does get overrated a lot, but for good reason. He's one of the more balanced killers. And um, he, he benefits from having a lot of skill backing his play style. I would actually put him down here in A, though, after understanding him a bit more. Because... Um, he doesn't really have a ton of loop counterplay. Um, there are certain tiles that you can curve around if you're good enough. Um, most of the time you have to just be aggressive and get the pal down and rely on making dead zones, which is a good skill to have when you're playing killer. Um, playing in terms of just like, not like, oh wow, this chase has been going on for so long, but playing in terms of like, okay, playing in terms of winning the 4v1 is like the best way to describe that. It's, understanding oh that this pallet's gone so now survivors that run over here thinking there's a pallet here there's not going to be one they'll down very easily because i can back rev them um and there's a lot of unique tricks to billy like feathering and curving obviously um he does have a lot of skill and he's a good really really fun killer to play um you don't have to chainsaw every single survivor you can run around in m1 people most perks work pretty well on him. There's some crazy builds out there. Uh, I consider Billy to be one of the best killers in Dead by Daylight health-wise and skill-wise too. I've already been eight minutes, hello? I've only ranked the base killers. <laughs> nurse, I don't, we don't, we don't need to talk about Nurse. Definitely the best killer. Um, yeah, moving on. I, it's just redundant. She can blink through walls. You've played against a good nurse at this point. I don't need to say why she's definitely the only triple or double S tier killer. Myers, I think as the years have gone on, Myers has started to slowly go down the tier list as more killers like Oni and Ghostface and Plague have come out that really just make this killer's power look a lot worse. Um, I consider Myers to be another one of the more balanced killers, kind of on the same level with... Uh, Trapper here, as in like uh, just an average middle of the road. Uh, I do think he's better than Trapper, obviously, but I would keep him down here in B tier. He has a really powerful one shot. He has incredible snowball potential. He does rely a lot on snowball perks like Infectious Fright, Save the Best for Last, Barbecue and Chili somewhat. Um, so, But he does have a lot of benefits to him. I, I, like I said, I think as killers that have come out that are better than him, um, he's started to look a little worse over here. Uh, he can still get looped a lot. If you're in tier 3, it's going to be a bit easier because you've all stuff faster. You kick stuff faster. You, you know the Megilla. Um, he is interesting, but he's still, at the end of the day, just an M1 killer. So for that reason, I'm just going to put him in B. Hag is without a doubt one of the strongest killers in Dead by Daylight. I used to be a Hag main uh, back when 2.1.0 came out and Hag got buffed for the first time and then people slowly realized oh shit, this killer is really good, and she is really good. Uh, she has tons of things going for her. Um, flashlights counter her power quite a bit to start off, and she's also 110. That hardly matters. Uh, she has incredible map pressure, map control. Not incredible map control, but the map pressure is there. Uh, she has incredible 1v1 potential with her traps. Uh, she's a complete and other loop stopper there's really no point in even trying if you're a good hag um she can pressure hook saves a lot she's really really good at establishing pressure and making survivors go out of their comfort zone and then die when they run into your traps eventually one of the strongest killers if you know how to play i've been on record saying that doctor um is a lot better after his buff and i gotta say the more and more i play him the more and more i think he's better than everyone thinks uh doctor's one of the strongest killers in the game or <laughs> he's he's yeah, I get, he, oh, fuck it. <laughs> he's one of the strongest killers in the game that is not the strongest killers in the game. So he's like right below there. Um, he has really, really, really good uh, loop stopping now that his power is a lot more uh, uh, streamlined and easier to use. Um, if you go against a good doctor, they're never going to let you throw a pallet down. Um, me, myself, playing doctor, I've he's one of my most played killers uh, without just free he is to use and how easy it is to play him um and just completely shit on survivors that think they're the shit when they are looping um he, he still just kind of walks everywhere um but i think static blast and and his shock are 
are just brutal enough to make it so that the one his incredible 1v1 potential makes up for his lackluster 1v4 potential. It's kind of the same deal with Spirit, how she has amazing 1v1 potential, and Nurse as well. And those are some of the, what some of the best killers are. They are just incredibly good at the 1v1, so people don't even have a chance to win at the 1v4 since no one's buying them time. Um, that's the case for Doctor. He's kind of the weakest killer on that spectrum. Uh, because he just walks everywhere. He's not a spirit or a nurse, but he's pretty good. I would keep him in A though, just because he walks everywhere and he's not unique in that regard. Huntress is by far one of the most complex killers um, to rank because it's really the first time I'm going to have to really decide if I want to rank this on like a pro player uh, with Huntress because Huntress by far has the highest skill cap of any killer in Dead by Daylight. It is not even a question. Uh, you will shit on baby huntresses, and you will get shit on by baby hun or uh, pro huntresses, which makes it so hard to rank her. I think I'm gonna put her above Billy, right here. Yeah, um, because she was the first killer that has a official ranged attack. Uh, you throw a hatchet; if it hits a survivor, they go down a health state and all the way to dying. Um, and obviously when people got their hands on Huntress, it was it was incredible. And she's by far one of the most frequent killers I see when I play Survivor. Uh, mainly because everyone just wants to be good at her. Uh, she is incredible once you really know how to throw hatchets and uh, zoning people, obviously. Uh, predicting survivors, what they're going to do. Her 110 movement speed does make it a little bit um, of a bitch to play when you get... You just have her on a losing streak. You keep missing your hatchets. Um, but it, it's really a killer that rewards patience uh, and being good at them. And as soon as you get the hang of her, she feels incredible. I really miss the days when I could see Bubba on my tier list and immediately put him in D tier. This is the first time I'm ranking Bubba as of his rework, which happened so long ago. It tells you how long I, it's been since I've done a tier list. Uh, Bubba used to be what I consider to be the worst killer in Dead by Daylight, um, mainly for his memeable uh, nature and obviously his lack of being good. He's not actually the worst killer. Uh, that role has always been destined for Clown. Um, but I always put him down here just from for how iconic he was at being the worst. But nowadays, it's really just an insult to put him down there. The new Bubba um, isn't really that much better than what he was down here. But he's definitely not the worst anymore. Um, he's still just Bubba. <laughs> um, it's really, I just don't know. I'm going to put him here. Uh, top of B tier, I think. That's where I'm going to just keep him. Um, Bubba obviously has a one shot, and he can hit multiple targets at once. Bubba's been Bubba for the longest time, and that hasn't changed in the whole of the time he's been in this game. They just gave him more charges, um, made it a lot easier to play him well. Um, and just streamlined how it was to play Bubba, which is good. And I really do th love playing new Bubba. I think he's um, one of the most f played killers for me, just because of how um, fun it is to to eat pallets and just down survivors with his ability. He's definitely not the best killer because he can still get looped. He doesn't have like a Billy ability. He can't really like shut down loops. Um, he he's really just like. A version of Billy that has to always just be aggressive with pallets and really, really, really just rely on making dead zones where survivors can't escape from the chainsaw. When that happens, he's one of the best killers. And sometimes you can do like moonwalks in mind games with the chainsaw. Doesn't happen all too frequently. But uh, yeah, he is definitely better than what he used to be, but still not the greatest. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I'm a Freddy main ever since his rework. And Freddy is by far one of the strongest killers in Dead by Daylight. Um, and I'm actually going to always say that he's the third best killer. Um, Freddy has two abilities, Dream Snares and Dream Pallets. Never, ever go for Dream Pallets. Um, Dream Snares are his base kit, and they are the best because they actually have loop counterplay. If you play with Dream Pallets, you'll just get bullied by all the survivors that know where the real ones are that you can't really deal with there's a ton of things going for freddy that are really really good and what make him really devastating in the chase one he's short short killers uh you can't see them over loops uh and they give him a lot more potential for mind games he's max speed he's 115 so he can still pressure loops a lot and 
he has dream snares which you can place around the loop preventing survivors from even getting close to a pallet if you know the setups for freddy on each tile there's literally no way survivors can win and he's another one of those killers where uh he is incredible in the 1v1 which helps him a lot in the 1v4 because no one is buying time for freddy against a freddy because he's just so devastating except he actually has a really good 1v4 potential too he has jelleport he can teleport to a generator depending on how many people are in the dream and they're really popular perk combos like pop and ruin on dying to pressure people off gens a lot and it's just like wow he didn't need jelleport but he's one of the best killers in the game because of it. He has incredible loop stopping potential, uh, and he has incredible gen control. I mean, it's incredible. Freddy, definitely one of the best killers in Dead by Daylight, and I will never not say that. Pig is definitely a really weak killer, unfortunately. Um, better than Wraith, because uh, she has map pressure with the, the traps, and you can uh, exclude survivors from doing things like saving or doing generators when they have a trap on their head usually uh, which makes it a lot easier to create pressure which is something that the pig has going for her uh, and then she does have her dash attack and her crouch attack um, really not a ton going there if you really are gonna get shit on by a pig it's gonna be because they're a good player and know how to mind game at tiles uh, she is short she has 115, so another thing that is good for her that a lot of people don't take into account. She doesn't have great loop stopping potential. She just walks everywhere. Uh, she does have a stealth, which is good. She's fine. It's just she doesn't have a super good ability. Clown is shit. I just... I mean, he's shit. I'm sorry. I'm not going to talk about him. <laughs> Spirit is just insane. You don't even need add-ons. You don't need perks, really. Spirit is by far the second best killer in Dead by Daylight. She has an incredible 1v1, uh, which makes her an incredible killer in the 1v4 because, again, no one is buying you time against the Spirit. Everyone is going down in seconds. Basically, what her power is, is she holds M2 and then she wins because survivors can't see her. She's completely invisible. She can see scratch marks. She can hear breathing and footsteps and moans of pain. So she basically just knows where you are if you have a good headset. So you just hold M2 and you find them and they don't know where you are and you win because you're faster. It's stupid. There are some people that have tried to counter spirit with like weird pathing and iron will and shit. It's really just nothing. You can still hear the footsteps. It's, it's nothing. Spirit is broken. Legion's pretty weak too. Um, he's on the highest end of these little weak killers down here um, mainly because his power is just so weird uh, they reworked him a lot of times and now he's just kind of like in a weird limbo state his frenzy is just basically to injure people and it's it's in a really weird state usually the thing i've always said with legion is he again he's small he's 115 so he does have that going for him he's not absolutely shit uh, he can mind game a lot of tiles a lot of the time if you're a good player so there's that um i've always said that legion is just kind of his power does not have a niche because they completely fucked it and the amount of times they've reworked him because that it doesn't have like a particular way to use it you can use it in a wide variety of ways you can use it for mobility you can use it to track people to injure people uh again it's not super helpful and you're not really going to be using his power at Totten. Uh, when you play this killer uh, like he used to which is a good thing because his old power was just broken and was terrible it's just a killer that is 115 and is short that can injure people and track people and honestly that's not the worst thing in the world it's not fucking much but it's something so yeah <laughs> that's it Plaguey got a, a slight buff recently um, where they gave her her crud purge at the start of the match so people just couldn't not cleanse the whole time. And that bumped her up from this tier to right here, I think. A little better than Myers. Um, she doesn't have a lot for loop counter play at all, uh, aside from crud purge, which is on a time limit. But with how it is now, uh, you'll usually be able to pressure people into cleansing so that they don't feel completely helpless. Because when she has that power, she's up here. But she doesn't have it all the time, so that's why she's kind of down here. Um, she's really, really tall. She's 115, but she's really tall. So a lot of the time she can't do a ton of mind games unless 
you're on like a jungle gym with really, really high walls. It's definitely possible. And again, you'll be puking on people so they're injured the whole game or you have the second best power Dead by Daylight. So either way, you're probably going to be killing people with her nowadays, which is really, really good and a good feeling. Uh, but there's still counterplay to her. She's very, very just what she is. Uh, you can still loop her. Uh, and there's counterplay there, but she's actually got some potential, so it's cool. Plague is a little bit better now. Ghostface. I remember when True Talent said he was the third best killer, and I took the piss out of him. Um, I've warmed up to Ghostface a bit. I was always in the camp like, no, Ghostface is not the third best killer. He's an M1 killer with a really powerful stealth mechanic. Um, he's definitely better than Myers, in my opinion. Uh, not better than Dr. Billy, none of these guys, but he's up here. Um... He has a really good stealth, a really good stock if you know when to use it. Uh, he's got really good mind game potential because, again, he's short, 115, and he can also turn off his terror radius and do some mind games with that. He can crouch as well. He has a really, really, really freeform power, which is a good feeling. He's a really fun killer to play, uh, and he also rewards a lot of skillful play. He, he just has a lot of potential in his corner. He can. He's very successful at doing mind games. He's very successful at the one-shot category. He's really successful in creating pressure and sneaking up on people. He's just got everything. He's a killer that has everything, and it's great. Uh, that's which is why he's so powerful, and which is why everyone thinks he's so good. He's not the third best killer, though. Come on, tree talent. Why is it up? <laughs> Demi Bourbon is a killer that I'm just terrible with. Uh, I've gotten a little bit more practice in with him, so I understand what's good about him. The portals don't bother with the portals. The shred is his power, uh, and it's a really good power too. And Demogorgons will shit on you a lot if they know what they're doing. He's still kind of a middle third killer. Uh, he does have the potential though. I don't think he's better than Billy. I don't think he's better than Doctor. I might think he's better than Ghostface. He doesn't have a one shot. He's really tall. He's one fifteen. So you can't really do a lot with him. He has a really good power, though, but it can be done with shit that is... Uh, I'm sorry. I just I just went further and further down. Um, yeah, I just realized he's really, really tall. He's 115. He gives... Oops. He gives survivors a lot of information when he hits people, which is by far my least favorite thing about him. The less survivor the information that survivors have, the better. I don't really don't know why nowadays the killers just tell survivors everything that they're doing when they're not even near them. It's one of the problems with Clown. It's just every time he throws a bottle and hits someone, hey, the entire team, I'm getting chased. It's like they might as well be on comms at that point. Um, but yeah, Demogorgon has a really, really good power. It's, it's a loop stopper if you know how to use it. But... Um, it's not a one-shot, and survivors can still loop you a little bit uh, if you're in a situation where you can't use your shred all the time. The portals are fine. They're just minimal map mobility. It's not the best thing in the world. I think the Magurin's a really solid killer, but I don't think he's super great at the same time. So there's always been the argument, which is better, Hillbilly or Oni? They're basically the same killer, except Oni has to charge his power, and Billy can use it whenever. I think Oni is better than Billy, and I think he's better than Huntress, for that matter. I'm going to put him right there. Um, Oni is one of the most well-designed killers in Dead by Daylight. Um, he has a really weak early game, but it pays off when you start to snowball. He's a killer that really re gets rewarded for snowballing and injuring people, and that's a really great feeling to play as a killer. Uh, just being rewarded for playing well, injuring people, establishing pressure. He, you, By injuring people, you get a power that allows you to kill people better. Um, there's still potential to counter it if you are a smart survivor that knows what you're doing. Uh, the same, that, the exact same way that the Oni can counter you if he predicts you well. It, it's kind of the same thing that is Billy, except you can't get really back, rev, back revved with Oni. And his power's on a cooldown, which makes him a little bit more fun to play against, I think. Uh, he's actually one of my, my favorite killers to go against. Um, because when he uses his Demon Rush, it's like hard mode and it's really fun and exciting um so yeah i'm i'm really content with oni i think he's one of the best and most healthy killers that have come out since uh ghost face which was like almost oh yeah he's the best i'll say that he's the most <laughs> he's the best killer he's about my favorite dlc that's how that's how i'll put it my favorite dlc oni
Uh, Death Slinger is uh, the quote-unquote boring killer to go against if you're a survivor man. Uh, the thing with Death Slinger, he zones you for free. And this is something that Scout Gen points out all the time. He zones you for free, and there's no literal way to... It's not physically possible to react to his shot if he's quick scoping you and a good death slinger, which makes him really, really strong and also really, really unpleasant to go against, which is what makes it so hard for me to place him. He's just, he walks everywhere. He's a 110 killer. Uh, he has a, a strong power, but it's just really slow to do it. Like you shoot people and then you hit him. I think he can still get looped, honestly. If a, if a survivor plays really safe. He's really intimidating, though. Because of how quickly he can shoot. I don't know if he's better than Huntress. I think he is. Because... I just don't know. I'll put him here, and then move Oni up. I think that's good. Oni just up a little bit more. But Deathslinger... Slightly better than Huntress. They're both kind of the same level. They both have their own pros and cons. Deathling are better because uh, he has a smaller terror radius and he is less easy to predict because with Huntress, you have to do the whole wind up. Uh, there's very little counterplay to a good Deathslinger. So that's why he's there. Pyramid Head. Pyramid Head is one of my favorite killers to play. Um, he rewards being able to predict survivors' movements. Uh, obviously a good survivor is just gonna try to become unpredictable, which is something you'll get a lot when you play Pyramid Head. It's something that happens to me when I play against Pyramid Heads. I, I know what the predictable survivor movement is, and I'll just go some complete weird direction, and, uh, it, I'll, I'll play them. Um, I just, I mean, I'm, there's so many good killers that have come out recently that these top ones are getting clogged up here. Um... He just walks everywhere. He's tall, but he's 115, so he's not the worst thing. Uh, and he does have a really strong power. I just you get generous to that as a pyramid headed. I don't know why. Um, it, it's almost good that he has his torments and cages because you'll have to usually tunnel someone to via the cages and avoid DS uh, with this killer a lot because of how frequently gens pop against this guy. It's really strange. Um, I think he's definitely counterable, though. But he's also... He's one of the more balanced killers. I really don't know where to put him. It's so weird. Uh, I think he's good. I just can't, I feel bad putting them up, all these people above Billy because then I, then I think about it like, wait, Billy's good. Why is... And I'll put him there. Honestly, I think Doctor's better because he has a tracking thing. I just don't know. I don't know. Uh, um, yeah. God, this is such an anomaly for me. If you feel bad about my pyramid head ranking, uh, just know that it was really hard for me. I, I'm not even sure I'm content with that, but I'm able to sleep now, so that's cool. Blight, one of the best killers, Dead by Daylight. Uh, I'm gonna put him right there. Yeah, if you're a good blight, you'll quickly realize how good this killer is. It's funny to me how quickly all of us thought he was shit on the PTV, and, and then we all realized, wait, no, he's actually really good. Yeah, um, you just need to know when to use his power, um, and use it quickly and efficiently, and, uh, usually survivors are just gonna have no way to escape you, uh, if you, if you play fast and aggressive with this killer. Uh, he's short. He's 115, which is another thing that's really, really good for him. And it's another thing that all these great killers like Freddy and Ghostface have that are kind of up here. Uh, so he can do a lot of really sick mind games. And he has an incredible power that has incredible map mobility and occasional, m more than occasional, but it's just not universal loop stopping potential like something you get with Hag or uh, Freddy. But it's good. Blight. Very good killer. And then we have the twins, the newest killer, by far one of the shittiest killers that's ever happened. Um, there is a big fundamental design problem with this killer, but it, you can still win with her. Um, I'm going to say he's better than Legion, but he's still in the shit tier kind of area. Or they are. Um, just because it's so 
weird the way that you have to play this killer and it's just no real grasp on how it, i mean it's so it's such a weird thing everything would you do with this killer if you play killing people with charlotte or killing people with victor you're either just a really tall 115 killer or you're a baby and then you have to walk everywhere i mean having to manage both killers is a blessing and a curse and you'll quickly realize how bad the killer is if you go against a good team i think um uh, playing with victor can be a, a cumbersome at best i mean that's putting it at best and then uh playing as charlotte is you just have nothing you're at and one and one killer at that point so there are good ways to play the killer but it's not the best feeling in the world i think uh as time goes on i f i'm really certain that people are going to realize that the killer is better than they thought but it's right now yeah i think i'm going to put her there uh and that's the tier list i'm actually really happy with this one i think this is the most accurate tier list i have done because uh i've been playing a lot more dead by daylight and killers that i usually didn't play a ton of like death slinger demogorgon uh and uh wraith i've been playing them more and understand what is good and what is really bad about some of them uh, so i'm i have them this is a more faithful list for me i'm pretty happy with it uh again if you have opinions please let us be respectful namaste <laughs> because this is an opinion look at this amazing opinion that you guys are witnessing here uh, i'm sure a lot of you are gonna say that demogorgon is should be higher pyramid head should be higher hag should be lower shit like that and i respect your opinions but this is my opinion and you should respect it too that would be swell anyways thanks for watching and uh remember stay gamer